Hey, fanboy nation. This is your pal Daffy Duck, and you're watching. You're watching. We're watching. You're watching. Fanboy. 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 A fanboy, etc. Fanboy nation. Dot. I assume. No. Um. <laughs> I have the pleasure of speaking with the co-director and writer of Cholo Zombies Monstro, Mark Newton, and the star of the film, Loretta Vamps. How's everybody doing today? We're amazing. Great. Thank you. Listen, it's great talking to you. I was the voice of the demon in the first one in oh Cholo God. Zombies. And, you know, as soon as I heard that the sequel was coming out and they're like, hey, you want to interview everybody? I was like, of course. If the first one was that fun, we got to have a good time with the second one. Right. That's it. You know, Mark, what's it like coming on to something that was already produced prior to and then taking over the writing and now being co-director? Yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, you know, I had talked with Vince and he gave me the story and then PJ uh, also had kind of an outline of what he wanted to happen. And then I wrote it up. I think it took about a month to do that. Uh, to write it up and then uh it went right pretty much right into production right as the the script was finished and uh, we jumped right into that crazy story you know um some of the things you know that originally that i wrote it that way for didn't turn out like the the uh self-help was supposed to have all these celebrity stars in it and then you know it didn't really end up that way but we had ray oriel uh from uh blood in blood out He's Spider, and that was his first time coming back to a movie since uh, Speed, or was he in Speed? Or no, wait. Oh, oh, no, it was Blood In, Blood Out, but then he did Colors. Mm -hmm. it's, it was the first one since Colors, remember that movie? Oh, Colors. yeah, that was a great <laughs> flick. Yeah, so he hadn't been in a movie since then, but uh, so, yeah, it was nice to have him and Carlos Carrasco from uh, Blood In, Blood Out also. Mm -hmm. Listen, this one was a lot of fun. Loretta, you're you're in both the original and the sequel. Uh, what's it like coming back for the same for uh, you know the sequel to a film that's in the same vein, but definitely not the same story? Well, um, PG saw some kind of visual between me and Vince that it, we could do a love story, so that's what we did. We made it a love story, and it was pretty cool. You know, like basically, um. And buried him from dead and brought him back and stitched it back together and um and then we broke up we, we had a zombie baby we broke up we were fighting for custody and then i was going on dates and he didn't like that so he would kill everybody that i would date and i wonder why they would never call me back it's because he would be eating them you know and how do you convict the zombie how did i what I said, oh, how, how do you convict the zombie? How do you convict the zombie? How do you convict the zombie? He can't. You can't give him the death right. sentence. You can't give him life in prison. Yeah. <laughs> so he can just get away with it. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. So did you see the uh, the the Cholo zombies, the first one? Because I re-edited that. I didn't get a chance to see the the uh, re-edited version, but okay. I got to see this one, and this one was a lot of fun. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. check out the re-edited one because you're you're in it. But I did pitch your voice a little bit to make it even creepier. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. You're, the, you're basically the devil, you know. <laughs> or whatever in that what, one. what was your line as a devil? Oh God, Paul uh, Paul Rodriguez was complaining about something, and then I threw something in about taxes being too high, and that was like part of the whole demonic thing along with it. You know, mm -hmm. we just keep raising taxes on everybody. Yeah, he was basically sold his soul to. Uh, to stay alive and you said well there's a catch you know you're gonna stay alive but you're gonna be a zombie <laughs> oh, you got to work with paul rodriguez he's amazing oh so. paul's incredible you were incredible in this film you had a lot of fun mm -hmm. yeah and then is it your daughter who's uh lilith vamps oh, no that's my son's daughter your son's daughter so this is your grand you're a grandma yeah I'm get out of here <laughs> yeah. she, she had a young a I very had my young kids. Yeah, yeah yeah Emerson young yeah it looks like it, and wow, uh, you know, it looks like he started young too. Oh yes, he did. He, yeah. he did after me. <laughs> they say one of your kids always does what you did to your parents. <laughs> and he... So, what was it like working with your granddaughter in the film? Because she was, she looked like she was having a lot of fun too. It was amazing. She's a natural. She actually looks like me. She's like mini me. So she, we didn't. She was like an MVP. You know. <laughs> She she knew all her lines, very natural. I definitely, you know, wanted her to do more acting for sure. Mm -hmm. 
I like that you came up with with the concept that because it's a zombie baby, she's mm -hmm. almost, you know, 10 years old as she's coming out because mm -hmm. the timeline wouldn't make sense any other way. Right. That's what's up. Well, it, it was cool to have a lot of my a lot of my family was in this movie. So it was pretty cool to have a lot of my family in this movie. It was cool. Mm -hmm. How much of your family was in the film? Like extras? and, and uh, I like... had my brother was there. Um, okay, it was my brother. He was the referee in the boxing ring. Uh -huh, he yeah. was the referee in the boxing ring. And now, and then I had um, my other little brother's car, the red car. That was my brother's car. The one that, the red truck, the one that yeah. Chon Chon's driving. Mm -hmm. He had that one. And then, yeah, I had a couple of my brothers in, in there. Huh? Mm -hmm. Who else was in there in the family? My uh, sister-in-law yeah. was there. Oh, yeah. um, my son was in it. He's also one of the punk rockers in the... Um, in the what do you call it in the ring and he was green which he was, was with the green mohawk yeah, oh that, that was your son nice yeah, yeah, fighting band, yeah. yeah he's a natural he's like me and now he's in the knuckleheads band which is a they're blowing up uh knucklehead tom if you look into that all right yeah. we'll give him a look after we made about him punk rock fight club <laughs> mm -hmm. you know tell, tell me about the location scout because i know the majority of it was filmed in the inland empire but then that theme park that you guys found the abandoned one Dude, that, that was, was intense. That was scary just looking at it without even like having to doctor it up. So that's an abandoned Six Flags that actually Katrina um, got. It got destroyed 2009 for Katrina, on oh, no, 2006 with Katrina. So it was destroyed. So they never fixed it. So everything was, you know, falling apart. And so it was pretty cool. It was yeah. great. Like, like animals or like snake, horses. Uh, we saw an alligator, right? Remember? Oh, a bunch of alligators. No, we saw an alligator and the stuntman was cool. Right after we, I saw him drive, he just flipped in the water. Vince threw him in and it was it was a trip. Like, you didn't care of those alligators in the water. Yeah, we <laughs> right? had we had one guy at the other side of the pond, like, uh, shaking. You could see all the alligators going mm -hmm. that direction. And then the stunt guy's like, okay, I'm going to do it now. <laughs> we had we had, had someone, like, make sure that they control the animals. That were, yeah, there was an animal wrangler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was killer bees. There we was oh my god, bees, the killer yeah. bees. My son went through a thing where like he had to do a scene and he saw all the killer bees. <laughs> he was like, oh my god. <laughs> but everything's pretty intact there, and uh, yeah, it's it's no more now though. I think it got sold to an NFL uh, player, and they're going to make it into a training camp. Why well, heard seventeen that. acres? It's actually on mm -hmm. seventeen acres, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it so. was amazing to film in the band and six. Like, I, I, I wish we could do more. It was yeah. so awesome. Right. That was the... like a perfect set for all horror movies. Or, yes. It is, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was amazing. Well, well, we have Cholo Zombies 1 and now Cholo Zombies Monstro. It looks like there's talks of Chola Zombies coming out. You yeah, know, we started Chola Zombies, so we already have. Yeah, we're 25% uh, mm -hmm. done filming that one. So. Yeah, that's nice. amazing. Excited about Chola Zombies. That's her movie, yeah. Uh -huh. like, I'm the lead, and, and I'm so honored to be the lead. It's amazing. And um, we're just gonna take it to another level. Like you, you saw one and two. You better be ready for three. Yeah. Gonna pull you three well, you what's the shoot three. schedule like? Because they're relatively quick, you know. But you got it's almost like theater where you're just like, all right, you know, let let's get it going. Well, we're spreading this one out a little bit just because the locations are pretty big. Like the next location is at the uh, the L.A. Overlook, where a lot of low riders go right there. So you, it's right by the L.A. River. And, uh, you know, we need to get permits and everything for that one because we'll be shooting there all day. So it's a process for each of the shoots, you know, to to do it. So we haven't actually shot for a month, but we want to shoot everything that's happening outside before it gets hot again. So that's what we're that's the goal. And then we'll shoot all the inside stuff. So it's it's definitely out of order the way it's being shot. Mm hmm. But it's gonna be awesome. And yeah. I directed and wrote. I'm directing that one and wrote it. So, with her help, yeah. And I'm throwing some of my fashion in there. I also do fashion. I don't just act, but I also design. So we have a, a fashion scene in there, which I'm excited about. Nice. So you're the fat. So, so she's the, the costume designer on this one too. Yeah, exactly. She's the lady pinhead. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but uh, yeah, I've I've seen some of the pictures. You know, when I looked you up, and I was like. That's intense to put all that makeup on. She'll be a monster palooza this year as Lady Pinhead. So I did yeah. Pinhead a while back, and nobody had done Pinhead, a woman Pinhead. They wrote it in a book and everything, but nobody has cosplayed it. And when I did it, it went viral. It went viral, and all these women started doing Pinhead. So it's cool to start something, all the women as Pinheads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So take us into the production of Cholo Zombie Monstro. Like, what was pre production like? And then going from script to now being co-director because eric directed the first one 
And like, what's what's that like? You know, him giving up some of the, some of the control on set, you taking over some, and like keeping the balance between the two. Yeah, it was good um, because he uh, had done it before, but it was really um, such a different story and a different situation that it was like a brand new movie. And uh, he actually filmed the whole thing too. He had this like a big rig with a gigantic camera. And uh, he put the, some hard work into that filming it. So he's the one that actually, uh, you know, he was definitely worn out after um, this, the uh, abandoned. And then, the, uh, you know, he was worn out because he was, we were supposed to have a, a second crew and uh, they went on to uh, a different movie and um, that was like paying them way more or something, which wasn't cool, but yeah, we ended up, he ended up doing a lot of the work on that one. So it was tough, but we got through it. And then uh, makeup on a zombie movie takes forever. You know, we had Jennifer Corona for most of it. And um, she didn't make uh, it to New Orleans because yeah. she had another gig. So yeah. we had to get a backup. And the backups were not Jennifer Corona. So it was it, just a lot. Yeah, we were on. waiting like a long time for makeup to get done. You yeah. know, and it's like those, it was short days because of the, the, um, that time of year so it was crazy yeah it was it was really it, it was uh rough and, on us and it also was hard to get a lot of mexicans like latinos yeah. cholos in new orleans because there's not that many so we had to work with what we had we got them all any, all of them that were there we got, we had got whoever was there and then you had to you also did some visual effects to add some in there no, no not on that yeah but we we envisioned having way more zombies you know yeah it, was, it would have been it a was different. A if it was LA, it would have been a whole other vibe. Like, oh, we yeah. Brought, you know? Yeah. Here we could have. We... You would have gotten everybody from LA to San Diego. Which we did for Chola zombies. We probably had 60, 60 Cholas in one scene already. So mm -hmm. that was cool. Yeah. With the. Uh, Real Cholas, yeah. That, well, that's what you need. And, it's, you know, that's what you had in this one, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 They're all great movies, all different, they're all amazing. You know, everybody's amazing. The crew, everybody. You know. What was uh, your favorite joke that you wrote that just didn't work for this film that you're like, oh, I could save it for something else? Well, uh, I don't know if there was one. Uh, joke is when he's in jail and he goes, you're my ride or die. And she goes, but we're already dead. That, I thought that was like a great uh, line, you know? <laughs> I, I paused it because I laughed so hard that I was like, I didn't want to miss the next line. I thought that was the line of the movie. Oh, cool. Yeah, we want to make sure to say that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, if you make shirts like that, just get me one. Cause, you know, oh, yeah, we'll send you one. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm I think I'm going to do a set visit, not for Chola Zombies, but for another one that, that Pete's working on. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll get you in Chola Zombies too if you want to be. Yeah, yeah. Hey, why not? You know, you need another voiceover, let me know. What's up? Yeah, you we'll look like back. a cholo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we you can make you a cholo. Yeah, you look yeah. like a cholo. <laughs> just darken this up and you're in, man. Yeah, yeah right. you, you know, just get some little dye for it and everything. Uh, mm -hmm. What's it called? So, like, when, when you were making this film, you know, and, you know, Loretta, you're working with your granddaughter and you're saying she's a natural and she picked it up quick. Were there, like, moments where, you, like, you'd crack a joke with her and you'd break because she was so funny in delivering her line or her performance? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. it was awesome it was amazing working with her it was cool to be going to red carpet with her you know just you know knowing that there's like little mini me like you know continuing the you know the legacy you know that's awesome you're gonna make her mini pinhead when you when you go to monster palooza uh, you know what now nah, you just started a trend i got yeah i'm gonna do it that'd be <laughs> amazing you know what i'm gonna do it good idea yeah. I'll be down. Just, that, just shadow you in the same costume and everything just a yeah, small that'd be kind of cool i'll take it to another level yeah that'd be cool I'm actually working on a, on a, a different costume with Pinhead I want to do okay. for, for that weekend. Mm -hmm. You know, horror movies are big business. You know, they're they're made for cheap and they they typically make a killing. When you make a horror comedy and trying to find the balance between scary and funny, and this one and this one isn't scary, but it is funny, and I love the zombie aspect of it with this. Um, you know, how do you keep that balance in try and like appealing to the horror crowd, and then still like bringing in people that aren't necessarily horror fans but want to laugh? Well, what we we originally made that as a PG movie, uh, that was the intent, and you know, it was going to be for kids, 
And that's why we kind of toned it back, even though it's kind of extreme in some some parts, you know, uh, the court scene and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, even in that court scene, she's saying that she wants to be with her mom and dad both. So she doesn't even mind, you know, being cut, you know, in uh, split custody, you know, <laughs> she doesn't mind because she wants to be in that. We try to do that to identify with kids going through like a divorce. But it was that was a PG movie. Uh, and it was made that way on purpose. So there's not one cuss word in it. And really, we kept the uh, the um, violence down somewhat. But the we decided, well, that doesn't really work for us. It didn't help in any way. So the next Chola Zombies is the other way. It's it's very gory. So the next one, you'll see a lot of gore. And we have music, chemo. We have uh, our mom oh, for what for Chola. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we for, for that one, though, like, if we keep it. We had music from uh, Sick Jagan, who was uh, from Psycho Realm, you know, Which I'm and, a big uh, fan. and then Chemo and and Chemo the Black Skin, Chemo the Black Skin, and um, from the Nikon Habits, yeah, yeah, with uh, Sick Jagan in a song. So we had some really cool music too in that one. Yeah, the fact that you guys had original music actually puts it over the top. It wasn't like just stock stuff that you could find for free. Right, and we had some beats also for my brother does music too. Um, you know. Oh yeah, speaking. yeah, he did a lot of the beats. Her brother, yeah, and and his and his partner, they both did music. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it, we had a lot of the beats in their their music. And mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't remember his name? Um, the yeah, his partner. Yeah, um, I can't remember his name. I can't think right now. For yeah. Susha or something. Oh, Fuchsias, Fuchsias. He he yeah. makes a lot of beats. Yeah. So he a lot of his beats were in in. And Chola Zombies, and Chola Zombie Monstro. Yep. And he had a song of Bins. And so with my friend Kevin had a song. He's also oh, yeah. in a metal band. So when, when Monstro starts, you hear the metal song. That was my son on my friend Kevin. Um, that was his song. <laughs> it was pretty cool. You know, you were mentioning the courtroom scene where, where she was she didn't mind being cut in half for it. And I just love right. that no matter what, she just keeps kicking Vince. And then the right. yes or no aspect in the kicks w was really right. cute. It's yeah, because so that, that part of her body can't talk. So yeah, we're figuring yeah. it out, yeah. yeah. But it looks like everybody had a great time making this film. Uh, you know, the short, how, how long was the initial short before you went to Louisiana and started filming in the theme park? Uh, you mean how many days did we shoot? Or, yeah. Or, um, man, I don't even, I think it was, that was uh, probably 20, 20 to 25 days of shooting so it was a lot i mean we got set back for a few things like the the skydiving scene vince was actually supposed to do that he was really supposed to jump out but we had a stunt double for him but um you're giving it uh, away oh yeah yeah i know but uh <laughs> yeah, he did amazing he did we have amazing a zombie himself. that skydives yeah <laughs> he, did, he was but funny he, he the weather wouldn't wouldn't allow uh that so we kept postponing and the weather wasn't right the weather wasn't right and so finally that put the whole movie back a little bit so we had to come back around and finish up some stuff when we were uh done in new orleans so that it, it was uh it was probably about 25 days yeah i wouldn't jump no nah, mm -mm. i'm not jumping out of a plane I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm oh, hell no they were I, talking I, I about boy, I like, would oh man. yeah actually PJ's brother jumped yeah PJ's brother it was his birthday and he said I would jump he did it he took the he took yeah, it we put the makeup on him and <laughs> yeah. I'll be sitting up. on the ground just waving to him as he's coming down hey good to see you you know this movie was a lot of fun and I know it's it's on various VOD platforms right now is there talks of like doing uh, a hard copy DVD? Because like myself personally, I love hard copies. You know, I love the tangible because I want to be able to feel it. And if I see you guys at a convention, I want to get it signed and that sort of thing, you know, versus just like, oh, you know, I have a digital copy here somewhere I can click on and watch it any time. But like there's no real connection with digital there is with physical media. Yeah, I mean, that's already supposed to happen. It's in the works. So it'll be very soon that the Blu-rays and uh, DVDs are coming out. Uh, hard copy and they're um they're supposed to go into walmart uh, best buy just stopped doing dvds which is kind of sad uh but they'll be in walmart and um barnes and noble if you know the ones that are still left 
right. uh, it'll be in there. And then Target, any place that still has DVDs, it'll be in there. And then you can order them off Amazon too. I don't know, man. The whole streaming thing, like, you know, they went too deep into it. And then you're we're going to see a lot of consolidation coming, especially with, with the big guys. Like, Netflix is going to be left standing. I know that for sure. Uh, Hulu, I think, is going to finally merge with Disney+. Plus. I don't know what's going to happen with Max and Peacock and Paramount+, Plus and all those guys, if they're going to consolidate or, you know, what's going to happen with that. But I just think they went too hard, too fast into streaming without yeah. realizing, like, what the tangible is. Like, vinyl has made a comeback, and I'd rather have a record you know, when I meet a band and get them to sign it versus just like, oh, I streamed it on Spotify. I mean, nothing against Spotify and streaming because it's easier for the car, but like to actually have it and then like frame the album cover would be so much cooler. Oh, yeah. And that's the reason it's coming back is because the kids who didn't experience a vinyl like we did growing up, uh, they can get a million songs in their pocket on their phone, a million songs, like literally. And uh, but then they see it. Uh, a record and we're like oh this has so much cool stuff that's why it's coming back because it's like yeah you can have a million songs but you it's cooler to hear it on a record player you know it actually is you know to hear the scratchy noise and just the analog sound you know is, is cool and so. just being careful and dropping the needle on the record yeah <laughs> i'm actually on the vinyl for the prayers is a it's a it's a I don't know if you heard of the prayers. I'm actually in the in where it spins. That's kind of cool to see. Yeah, face. sure. Her face is on the record. Mm -hmm. Oh, right on. Yeah, yeah. A lot of those cool yeah. prints are doing that now. Like they're they're imprinting images on the vinyl. It's not just the black disc anymore. Oh it's yeah. A spin. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cool. Uh, like dancing is doing like blood splatter across the the record, and like they mix the wax differently. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I did a fashion show and used records on on the clothes and on the on the pieces out of vinyls because I was doing some tradition thing, out mm -hmm. of, like inspiration of, of people that you know music. So it's cool to use vinyls on fashion. Uh, pretty... What like what? Are... <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, no. Since you since you're gonna have it on DVD, what are some of the bonus features gonna look like? Like, is there gonna be director's commentary? Is there going to be you know, like bloopers, stuff like that? Yeah, I think there'll be bloopers, uh, deleted scenes, because that movie was about two hours long, the first cut of it. So we'd cut out full scenes, um, really funny ones too. So it was a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm with a, so you said, you know, it kind of shows Monstra being born and then all of a sudden she's big. Some of the scenes we had to cut was a medium version of her uh in between which was uh uh ito bats what's her name was her oh it was penny my niece well, yeah she, penny she cut some of her was in it yeah so we had to cut that one but she's actually in there as a flashback when the uh she says oh she was growing fat they grow so fast and it flashes back to her real quick but um those will be in there and then yeah hopefully commentary would be great yeah what's your favorite blooper uh blooper uh Probably, I mean, everybody had some. Probably, you know, Vince, when we were doing his skydiving thing, I had a a, um, a weed blower, uh, and I was blowing it right into his mouth and his face, and it, he was trying to talk, and it was like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> some of those scenes are in there, but it, that was pretty funny. What about you? Can you think of a blooper? I just, I like when I had the baby, the zombie baby. What about a blooper? Can you think of one? That happened. That that was funny on set. When all when the heads were fall when the heads were falling, like when they're doing a a fighting scene and the heads falls off. Yeah, and you just throw it around and stuff like that. I don't know. And then we had uh, oh, one of our sayings was "man overboard." <laughs> that, that, those were those were uh, some bloopers that will never be seen. But she, her outfit was so revealing that when she had a, a slip up, we would say "man overboard" because. You know. <laughs> I get where you're going with that, you know. And then, uh, you know, slight shift. Joey Beltran's also in the movie. You oh, know, yeah. How'd you pull off getting Joey? Because Joey's a lot of fun to hang out with, but Joey's dangerous, too. Yeah, yeah. He was, uh, he's very interested in getting into acting. So anybody that wants to cast him that's watching this, you know, uh, we're get, he's in the next one, too. Um, but he was Vince's friend. So we got him through Vince Romo. Yeah. And he was great because he kind of, 
loses the fight you know and it's like are you okay losing the fight and he's like yeah it's cool the way it happens you know it's like for a movie but yeah it was cool what about <laughs> when they hit the car the old mm -hmm. car mm -hmm. they were driving and they hit it by accident oh yeah that wouldn't be a blooper yeah that's a blooper they when they had that, that low my uh, brother's old car the, the red truck carlos carrasco was driving it and it, the turning radius isn't good and he went right into a curb <laughs> you know and, but, yeah and he scratched it <laughs> yeah and we were like ah, oh, but it wasn't that bad yeah that's all fixed yeah mm -hmm. so your brother wasn't too happy with that one oh he's all fixed it he's nice oh, just fix it, it wasn't, I don't it really wasn't know, anything bad yeah. i don't know behind doors if he was like mad but he didn't show it you know <laughs> right yeah well i'm thrilled that you guys had a lot of fun with this it's on vod now on all various platforms uh you know it's friday night I want to watch a movie. Why do I need to pick Cholo Zombies Monstro? Uh, yeah, you're definitely going to laugh. I mean, if you're ready for like a, a wacky, you know, you can't believe they're doing that type of uh, horror movie. This is the one. And you get to see Loretta Vamps. So I think it's. I think the movie is very hip. Like there's a lot of people doing movies. I think it's very kind of animated. It's hip. It's cool. It's modern. So I really feel like you know, it has a different twist in a lot of the movies out there. And, you know, it's a love story. And it just has a lot of different um, cool stuff in every angle. Like, you know, so I just feel like it's funny. The costumes, the people, the makeup. It's just a little bit overall. What, locations. Everything was cool. I just think it's hip. I think kids will love it because it's modern. You know, it's not like, you know, it's, there's a different twist than a lot of the normal um, zombie movies that they have out what's happening now so i think we're we're we're, we're cool you know it's pretty cool so in the vein of uh beetlejuice you know where it's kind of a talking zombie or he wasn't a zombie but uh or uh the monsters where you see you know uh these like uh basically horror characters talking and having fun and they have personalities you know that's what this is it's the monstros is... and then we're gangster you know like yeah. it's funny like you're gangster it's funny you know what i'm saying i just think it's cool because we're gangsters and we're cool and we're <laughs> funny because you know i don't know if you see a lot of the stuff that's out there now like you know everybody's doing a lot of stuff with gangsters and it's all comedy so it's cool so i think it's you know yeah and it's also uh giving you know it's, it's probably 90 percent uh latino mexican based mm -hmm. uh filmmakers and cast so that's kind of cool to see you know mm -hmm. that it's uh you know that that's that's what we're doing you know <laughs> and there was another other stuff that you guys cut out remember the one mm -hmm. the dancing scenes which one one yeah that really funny yeah yeah that's hopefully, they could, put, yeah, hopefully yeah. they could put it in another movie or because there was so much they filmed that was a lot more time that's mm -hmm. really good and i was like why did you cut that out but he's like we need to but i'm like it's so good like there's just so different scenes even my um lily you cut out her other scenes her screaming scenes there was a lot of scenes that were cut out but they wouldn't fit so hopefully they could put in another movie or like you said ending credits because they're so good it definitely needs to be put on something else another series or something for sure yeah and the uh so it's on um they're both coming out on apple tv too uh so the one you're in also so uh cholo zombies one and two they're both on um uh amazon and uh uh, Tubi, yeah. So if, if you want to watch it with ads, you can watch it on Tubi. We saw yeah. part one became a zombie, which I killed the director. Did you see part one, the one that you're in? That was funny. That was cool. Yeah, I had fun doing that. Listen, we had a great time. I got to kill Eric. See, you get to kill Eric. You get to have a good time, you know. And then you become I a zombie on top him. of it. <laughs> that was cool. It was. That was. That was fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. The fact that you're enjoying too much that you, you know that you got to stab Eric may, it makes it even a little bit creepier. But Eric. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did good. It was good. It was it was funny. That's how I came to zombie in the movie, and that's how I got the the part two. You know, like got the next one. Monster. I did good. So it was cool. We had to have that uh, because of COVID. We had to have it in a drive-in theater, the premiere. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was right during COVID and, uh, everyone cheered when that scene was over, you could hear everyone in their cars, you know, like, Oh, so that's kind of what all made us want to do it too. You know, 
do the sequel. No, no, no. I had to do the scene where I had to, you know, flip the knife. I don't know why in my head I was like, you know, I'm thinking like gangster stuff. Oh my gosh, it just, you know, it was just funny. It's a yeah, funny it was scene. Yeah, it was her idea. With it was a, just a funny stab, scene. Stab him with a knife. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not a good example, but it was just a funny thing to do, like in, in a comedy movie, you know? It's more of a joke. Like, it's funny. That's what's up. <laughs> but yeah, the, the everything was great. The movie was great. Everybody did amazing. Good cast. Good everything, you know. So yeah, PJ was a great producer. Mm -hmm. Like through all the happen. trouble that came up during that one, he made it happen. Yeah, mm -hmm. he made it happen. Yeah, he's very calm. When any situation, oh my god, what are we gonna do? He, he's a calm one. Oh, we'll just figure it out. We got this. He's very smooth. You know, that's awesome. I'll be honest with you. I wish I was half as calm as PJ. He's just like, sure, <laughs> we'll figure it out, or you know, it could be something crazy happening, or we're panicking, and he, he's just chill. We'll figure it out. <laughs> no. So Before that I let you guys go, where can we find you on social media if we want to connect with you and keep talking about the Cholo Zombie franchise? So I'm LA Movie Director, and that's as simple as that. I got that. I've been on Instagram for a long time. That's my handle on everything, including uh, Gmail. And I'm on Loretta Vamps. I'm on TikTok and Instagram. And that's with and a Z. Gmail as well. Loretta, Loretta Vamps with a Z. Everybody always writes with the S. It's a Z. Yeah, V A M P Z. So mm -hmm. all one word. So Loretta Vamps Gmail, Loretta Vamps Instagram, Loretta Vamps TikTok. Mm -hmm. awesome. And then, yeah. And we have Loretta Vamps YouTube too, but I, you know. That's, yeah, the YouTube's just getting started. So yeah. look for that. Yeah. Well, yeah. congratulations on the franchise. Mark Newton, Loretta Vamps. It's been a great pleasure chatting with you. You know, I can't wait to see uh, Chola Zombies when that when that's completed. Thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, thank awesome. you. Great interview. Thank we'll you. We'll talk so to much. you soon. Thank you for having us. <laughs>